Hey everyone, welcome back to Melissa's Kitchen Table. Today I want to show you how I make prime rib roast in the Instant Pot. So that sounds kind of crazy because roasts, you know, take forever. Um, but this one's going to come out delicious, nice and tender, juicy, full of flavor in a fraction of the time. So I have just over three pounds here. I have bone-in rib roast. And you're gonna season yours however you want. I got this um, recently from Trader Joe's. It's called the Roadhouse Seasoning. It has sea salt, sugar, dried minced garlic, dried minced onion, organic paprika, caraway seed, black pepper, crushed red pepper, roasted ground coffee beans. So that's a great seasoning blend to put on meat. In the meantime, I have my Instant Pot going on the saute function. saute high so we want to get that nice and hot I've had this piece of meat out for a couple of hours now because you don't want to put it in there um, cold so this is a big piece of meat you're gonna to have to season well season to your liking I know a lot of people um, feel very differently about seasoning and salt so you do it however you want to do it. All right, so I'm going to season this up. I'm going to let this pot get nice and hot, and then I'll be back. All right, so this is heating up. I'm going to add, I don't know, about two tablespoons of butter. And some olive oil. And then I'm going to get the roast in there. And I'm going to stir it on all sides. About three to four minutes per side. And I'll show you what it looks like after I flip each one. All right, so this looks like it's ready to turn, as you can see. And I'm going to continue to do this on all of the other sides. Okay, so I took the meat out, and I'm going to put in a cup of beef broth. I'm not measuring, so as long as you have at least a cup of liquid, you're all set. And I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put the trivet in. And the meat won't be sitting on any of the liquid. Right. And then we'll get this back in. <coughs> I'm going to add some garlic. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the fresh garlic, which would have been nice. I forgot to get it. So I'm just going to use this. I'm going to use some parsley. Like that. And then just a couple sprigs of rosemary right over the top. Alright, so you want to make sure your ceiling ring is in there properly. You're going to put that on. Make sure this is um, to the ceiling position. And then you're going to put the pressure cooker on high for eight minutes. Let me show you. So you have the pressure cook on high. For eight minutes and start. And then we're going to let this naturally release for anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. So this is only a three pound piece of meat. I would probably only let this go for 30 minutes. It'll be medium rare. A larger piece, you would probably do 40 minutes. So once all that's said and done, we'll make the gravy. All right, so after 35 minutes, 
I am going to take this out, take all this off the top. And I have the broiler in the oven going. And we're just gonna broil this a little bit. And in the meantime of broiling, I am going to make a gravy in here with the pan sauce. So let me get this out, get it into the oven to start broiling. All right, so that is starting to boil. I have it on saute. I have about a tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon of butter. I just kind of mash together. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can use a roux if you want, which is cornstarch and water. And as, as the butter melts, this is gonna thicken, obviously. We don't want it this thick. I will start to add the rest of the beef broth. Now for this, I don't like a real thick gravy, but if you and your family does, you can make it thicker, seasoned to taste. I'm just gonna use a little bit of gravy master. It's hard to see with the steam. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of liquid to this and then I'm gonna let it thicken. And once that um, the roast is under the broiler, about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes or so, I'm gonna let it sit for about 10 to 15. And I make the side dishes in the meantime. And I'm gonna serve ours with roasted asparagus and mashed potatoes, so I'm gonna get that stuff made and I'll show you when it's all plated.